The Americas were the final continent to be settled by mankind. A growing collection of archaeological and genetic evidence points to a complex colonization process. This is especially true in Central America, where unexpected ancestral signals have led to puzzling possibilities for early migrations across the continent. To add to the existing complexities, researchers discovered Denisovan and Neanderthal ancestry in ancient Olmec. Who were these people who built thriving civilization on the Gulf of American near the present-day Yucatan Peninsula? The Olmecs are the oldest major civilization in Mesoamerica, flourishing in the modern-day Mexican states of Veracruz and Tabasco. Understanding their genetic makeup offers insights into their origins, adaptations, and connections to modern Latin Americans. The Olmecs contributed genetically to subsequent Mesoamerican civilizations such as the Maya and Aztec, as suggested by cultural continuities like the ball game and ritual bloodletting. The most direct evidence of ancient Olmec DNA comes from a pioneering study of mitochondrial DNA conducted on human remains from two Olmec sites, San Lorenzo Tenochtitlan and Loma del Zapote. This research analyzed bone samples from two burials at the sites. The study successfully sequenced mitochondrial DNA, focusing on the maternal lineage, and found that both individuals unequivocally belonged to haplogroup A. This haplogroup is one of the five mitochondrial haplogroups characteristic of indigenous populations of the Americas, with haplogroup A being the most abundant. What does this tell us about the Olmec's origins? The presence of haplogroup A strongly supports the consensus among Mesoamerican researchers that the Olmecs were indigenous to the New World, with no reliable evidence of extra-hemispheric influences such as African, Asian or European ancestry, prior to 1492. This finding aligns with archaeological evidence of a local cultural heritage that developed independently in the Gulf Coast lowlands. However, the limited sample size of only two individuals raises questions about the representativeness of this genetic profile. Could additional burials reveal greater diversity, or are these results a fair reflection of the Olmec population? A related study on remains from Puyol Cave in Tabasco, Mexico, further corroborates this indigenous ancestry. Using next-generation sequencing, researchers dated the remains to the Archaic and Classic periods and identified mitochondrial DNA haplogroups consistent with pre-Columbian Mesoamerican populations, including those associated with Olmec and Maya ancestors. The Olmec mitochondrial DNA haplogroup A aligns with the founding lineages of Native Americans, supporting a migration from East Asia via Beringia. This reinforces the idea that the Olmecs shared a maternal lineage with other indigenous groups, descending from early migrations into the Americas via the Beringia land bridge around 20,000 years ago. A study on the 12,000-year-old skeleton known as Naya from Mexico also found a similar haplogroup A, linking these early Mexican-Americans to modern indigenous groups. The Olmec colossal heads, with their broad noses, thick lips and rounded features, have fueled speculation about their ancestry. The broad noses and thick lips of the colossal heads likely reflect natural variation within this indigenous lineage, possibly exaggerated by artistic stylization to signify status or cultural identity. The mitochondrial DNA study did not analyze nuclear DNA to confirm these specific genes, but the haplogroup A lineage suggests a shared genetic foundation with later Native American populations where these archaic introgressions are present. The fate of the Olmecs after their sudden and rapid decline remains unclear. Some suggest they intermingled with the mix or other local groups, and historical linguists propose a shared ancestry for the Olmecs. The lack of widespread ancient DNA analysis limits our understanding of their dispersal, prompting the question, did the Olmecs leave a more extensive genetic legacy than currently recognized? The ancient DNA of the Olmecs, based on the mitochondrial DNA study, confirms their indigenous Mexican origin, with both sampled individuals from San Lorenzo and Loma del Zapote belonging to haplogroup A. This supports the consensus that their civilization arose from local traditions, debunking alternative origin theories.
the established narrative as reflected in peer-reviewed journals and mainstream archaeology firmly rejects alternative origin speculations, such as African influences, proposed by figures like Ivan van Sertima. Van Sertima's 1976 book, They Came Before Columbus, suggested an African presence based on the facial features of Olmec colossal heads. These theories often relied on subjective interpretations of art and artifacts, such as the aquiline thick lips of the Olmec giant heads, rather than genetic evidence. The Olmec's genetic legacy likely influenced subsequent Mesoamerican cultures, but the full extent remains to be uncovered through expanded research. Ancient DNA also reveals connections to archaic human populations, such as Denisovans and Neanderthals, which influence traits like facial morphology. A 2021 study in Science Advances identified a Denisovan haplotype that affects lip thickness in modern Native Americans, a trait likely present in the Olmec given their predominantly Native American ancestry. Recent advances in ancient DNA analysis, combined with studies on Denisovan and Neanderthal introgression, offer unprecedented insights into the builders of Olmec giant heads. By exploring their genetic adaptations, we can uncover the biological and evolutionary story behind their remarkable resilience and cultural achievements. It's incredible that Denisovan and Neanderthal ancestry spread all the way to America, the mixing must have occurred a long time ago, possibly 40,000 years. The fact that the lineage lasted and its genetic signal was found in three ancient Mexican people shows that there was a major mixing event between humans and Denisovans in East Asia. Interestingly, the one sample from Panama had significant amounts of Denisovan ancestry, which is unusual except in Papua and Australia, while they also had similar levels of Neanderthal DNA to most Eurasians around 2%. Similarly, a new study in communications biology found a Neanderthal introgressed haplotype in the region associated with increased nasal height in a Latin American population with significant Native American ancestry. Since the Olmecs share this ancestry, these archaic contributions may have shaped their facial features, particularly their noses and lips. What do their noses, lips and face shapes tell us about their genetic heritage? How did the Olmec adapt their nasal morphology to their hot, humid environment, and what role did Neanderthal DNA play? The communications biology study provides a fascinating clue. A Neanderthal introgressed haplotype associated with increased mid-face height and nasal height in a population with significant Native American ancestry. This Neanderthal haplotype present in up to 31% of chromosomes tested, mostly on a Native American background, likely influenced the nasal morphology of the Olmec. The study compared modern nasal measurements with Neanderthal skulls, finding that the introgressed haplotype correlates with a taller nasal aperture, a feature typical of Neanderthals. Since the Olmecs share this Native American ancestry, they likely inherited this Neanderthal haplotype, which may have contributed to their nasal height. The ancient genomes of Tianyan Man from China, Ust Ishim Man from Western Siberia, and Kostenki 14 from European Russia, three of the oldest human genomes all dating to around 40,000 years ago, also contain Neanderthal introgressed DNA in regions associated with high elevation adaptation, nose shape, and potentially lip shape. Other Neanderthal alleles suggest that these early modern humans carried introgressed DNA that may have contributed to hypoxia response, providing a foundation for later adaptations in populations like the Olmec. Though not directly related to Native Americans, they share the same ancestors. The Neanderthal haplotype linked to increased nasal height is present in all three genomes, indicating that these individuals likely had taller nasal cavities. Neanderthal introgression in the region, while not directly linked to the Denisovan haplotype for lip thickness, suggests early modern humans had archaic DNA in this region, potentially influencing facial morphology in ways that overlapped with Denisovan contributions in later populations. These findings highlight the role of Neanderthal introgression in shaping traits relevant to facial morphology, traits that may have been further selected for in the ancestors of the Olmec.
However, the exact impact on ancient individuals remains speculative, as no direct facial reconstructions or nasal measurements from their remains are available in the studies cited. Lip morphology, particularly thickness, is another facial trait influenced by archaic introgression. The Science Advances study identified a Denisovan haplotype that affects lip thickness in Native Americans. This haplotype, present in 34% of the samples, increases upper lip protrusion and lip thickness ratio while reducing lower lip thickness. Could lip thickness also have played a role in social or cultural practices? While genetic data points to a functional adaptation, the cultural significance of lip morphology remains unknown. The builders' interactions with neighboring groups, as evidenced by minor gene flow in the Science Advances study, might have introduced additional variation in facial traits, but the Denisovan haplotype's prevalence suggests a strong archaic influence on their lip shape. The overall face shape of the Olmeds, beyond noses and lips, reflects a complex interplay of genetic and environmental factors. The Communications Biology study also identified other gene variants associated with facial morphology, such as chin dimples and forehead shape, but these were not directly linked to archaic introgression. While direct measurements of skulls are not detailed in the cited studies, the genetic data implies that their face shape was optimized for their environment, with archaic DNA playing a supporting role. The genetic data aligns with archaeological evidence of their lifestyle. They were skilled farmers, cultivating corn, avocados, tomatoes, and coca. The 2022 study confirmed their reliance on domesticated crops, supporting the genetic evidence of adaptation. Their monumental architecture, such as the giant heads, reflects a sophisticated society with advanced engineering skills, likely supported by their physical resilience to the highland environment. What drove their cultural achievements? The genetic continuity observed in the 2020 study suggests that the Olmec inherited not only biological adaptations, but also a cultural legacy of innovation from their ancestors. Their ability to thrive allowed them to sustain a large population, supporting the labor-intensive construction of their city. The influence of Denisovan and Neanderthal DNA on the Olmec raises intriguing questions about human evolution. How much of their success can be attributed to these archaic contributions? The Neanderthal haplotype enhancing nasal height and the Denisovan haplotype affecting lip thickness suggest that introgression provided adaptive advantages. The Olmecs are often called the rubber people. They lived in what's now Veracruz and Tabasco, prime rubber tree territory, and by 1200 BCE were making rubber balls for the Mesoamerican ball game a sacred and social ritual. The Maya and Aztecs later adopted this practice. They'd slash the bark, collect the milky sap, and mix it with juice from morning glory vines to solidify it into bouncy, durable rubber, a natural vulcanization process centuries before Charles Goodyear patented it. Castilla elastica grows wild in tropical forests, with broad leaves and a milky sap loaded with latex. Native peoples didn't breed it into distinct varieties like they did with maize, but they did manage and encourage its growth. Evidence from pre-Columbian sites shows rubber trees planted near settlements or in groves, suggesting semi-cultivation, selecting for productive trees and protecting them rather than letting nature run wild. The Aztecs, for instance, demanded rubber as tribute from lowland regions, hinting at organized production. Rubber wasn't just for sport, the Maya waterproofed cloaks and shoes with it, while the Aztecs used it for ceremonial offerings, burning rubber balls or figurines to the gods, and as a binding material. Spanish conquistadors like Bernal Díaz del Castillo noted rubber's versatility, describing how it was molded into shapes or used to coat items. Its elasticity and waterproofing made it a prized resource in a rainy, tropical climate. All right, now let's wrap this up and talk about cacao, the magical bean that gave us chocolate, straight from southern Mexico with a nod to the Olmec crew. We'll keep it simple, stick to the facts from archaeology, genetics and history. Here's the story in less than one minute. Cacao, or Theobroma cacao, kicked off its journey in southern Mexico, where the Olmec people, those ancient trailblazers from 1500 BCE, first got their hands on it. 
Archaeological digs around the Gulf Coast like San Lorenzo turned up ceramic pots with cacao residue dating back to 1800 to 1000 BCE. The Olmec didn't just stumble on it, they cultivated cacao trees in the humid lowlands of Veracruz and Tabasco, turning the bitter beans into a frothy drink that was more status symbol than dessert. Genetic studies back this up. Wild cacao's diversity peaks in Mesoamerica, with southern Mexico as ground zero before humans tamed it. Picture the Olmec as the original cacao hipsters, sipping their brew while everyone else was still munching maize. Fast forward, and cacao's tail gets wilder. Those beans didn't stay put. By 1000 BCE, the Maya and later Aztecs turned cacao into a sacred superstar, trading it across Mesoamerica and mixing it with chili for a kick. The Spanish, including Portuguese sailors tagging along with folks like Cortés, crashed the party in the 1500s, snagging cacao and shipping it to Europe, where sugar made it the chocolate we drool over today. Southern Mexico's Olmec roots held firm, though. Modern cacao DNA traces back there, even as plantations popped up in Africa and beyond. So, next time you bite into a chocolate bar, tip your hat to the Olmec. They started the sweetest hustle in history.